racism, child abuse of every kind, depression, anorexia, agoraphobia, PTSD, abortions, miscarriages, spousal abuse, divorces, single motherhood, death threats, betrayals, slander, libel, theft, starting over in different countries, economic devastation, suicide attempts. These sound like the daily headlines of the world, but they're not. These are just a few of the chapters of my life. I was born in Hong Kong in 1962 and was raised by my maternal grandparents. We were inseparable. So, when my parents suddenly decided to move to Canada and take me with them, I was devastated. Starting a new life without my grandparents and in a new country with people, a culture, and a language very different than my own was one thing. Enduring terrifying racism was another. My parents were soon divorced. My father was relocated across the country, and my mother had a boyfriend who abused my brother and me daily, and me sexually as well, while screaming, you're stupid, ugly, and good for nothing. I was seven years old. My mother married this man despite all this, and we lived in their house of horrors for another seven years until the courts allowed us to move in with my father. There's more, but you get the picture. Social structures as we now know it did not exist back then. So with no way of escaping hell physically, I had to find a, w I had to find a way out mentally. And for me, that meant imagining being someone else first so that I might become who I was meant to be later. And that, for me, meant becoming Kung Fu Barbie. I'll explain Barbie first. I needed time to catch my breath and a way to detach from the madness. Interestingly, I found my safe place playing with my Barbie doll. Through Barbie, I could imagine and indulge in dreams of living a happy life or just a different life, anything but my own life. To have loving parents, to have a home, to have friends who didn't care about my skin color, to not be abused. And Barbie, she had the ideal life. She could be anything she wanted to be. And I wanted that too. I wanted to be good for something. To me, as a little child, Barbie was the self-sustaining white girl who was never abused, molested, hated, or had her life threatened. She had a nice, normal family. Beautiful outfits, friends, a camper, and big eyes, not slanted eyes. She had a hard exterior, but that was good because all the abuse could not penetrate her heart. And she had a perpetual smile that no one and no thing could ever steal. She never laughed, though. But that was okay. Neither did I. Unfortunately, my fantasy life was not able to protect me for long. The abuse did not stop. The racism did not cease. And the depression did not leave me. But as I grew to become a young adult, I could no longer rely on Barbie, as you can imagine. So I followed in my family's footsteps and studied Kung Fu as a more appropriate outlet to feeling safe and empowered. In addition to finding my mental and physical strength, I also found hope, which was everything. You see, for those who have survived trauma, we know hope is a strategy, for hope is the gossamer thread to try again the next day. Hope is the path to believe and dream there's more. And hope taught me that while I may have been victimized, I was not a victim. I was no longer a wounded little child. I was a kung fu student, able to break through wood, incapacitate an attacker, and provide my own safety. I was Kung Fu Barbie. 
In Chinese, Kung Fu or Kung Fu in essence means someone who through skillful work and great discipline can grow in strength to become a respected master, scholar, and wise woman living life as art. Even in her boldness to fight injustice, battles can become artistry, hence martial arts. Now, as Kung Fu Barbie, I'd like to share my five life-changing disciplines to help you know you are made for more and be victorious in all you do while making it look like an art form. Discipline number one, through mud, the most beautiful flower grows. This old Chinese saying speaks of the lotus flower that only grows in dark, muddy waters. Lotus flowers are resistant to blistering summers, frosty winters, and are unaffected by pollution. They even have a water purifying component to them. Every aspect of the flower is considered a treasure and is used from ornamental to medicinal purposes. Despite the thickness of the mud, the flower will use its dismal surroundings to grow until it rises to the top and blossom there. And so it is with you, every aspect of you, your walk, your talk, your smile, your past, your dreams are treasures too. You may have had muddy beginnings and or are in muddy waters now, but grow through the dirt, rise above it all and purify the environment around you. No, it won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Let the dirt do its work. Discipline number two, plant two trees with one seed. I created this saying decades ago because I could not stand the term, kill two birds with one stone. I do not believe or condone the idea or even the metaphor that someone has to get hurt or die in order to get ahead. Plus to me, kill two birds with one stone is cold and calculating, focusing only on efficiency and the practitioner's skill. My saying, however, invites wonder into the process and focuses on possibility and partnership with the divine and with each other. Instead of speaking death, we can speak life into our situations. There's a sense of collaboration when you plant two trees with one seed, for while you have a part in it, the cause is greater than your glory and greater than your need. Keep your hearts and minds open and give yourself permission to play and to manifest the impossible. Our lives are not just for ourselves. They're for all of us and not just for this lifetime, but for a thousand generations to come. When you plant one tree, you leave a gift. When you plant two trees, you leave a legacy. So don't box yourself in. Partner and collaborate with wonder and let your bold and brilliant life unfold. Discipline number three, don't waste your saliva. This is my interpretation of a hilarious Chinese saying that basically implies that the person standing in front of you is so stubborn or worse that there's no point in wasting your Krebs cycle to create the saliva necessary to continue discourse with this person. The lesson, no matter what you do, some people just won't get it or get you, and that's okay. Don't waste your saliva with naysayers or opinionated know-it-alls who aren't open-minded or open-hearted and would rather kill than to plant. Don't feel compelled to educate or inspire them with your words. Show them. Model greatness to them. Live your dreams and let them be a distant intern under you. And one day, they'll sit with you under the shade of the two trees you planted with one seed and ask how you did it. This time, it won't be a waste of your saliva. Discipline number four is something that I've known all my life, and it is this. Your gifts will find you. People say that I've lived over 20 lives because of all that I've seen, and I have seen a lot. I've also learned a lot. And the one thing I know is that no matter how many messes have landed on me or how many messes I created, my purpose, just like the lotus flower, always found its way to the top. 
somehow things always worked out together for my good, as it will for you. So when you feel overwhelmed, know this. The very negativity that faces you is the very thing you have the authority to overcome. Those obstacles are only there to strengthen and equip you to make your dreams come true. You are made for more. So don't worry. You're not behind. You're not lost. And you're not less than. Don't compare. Don't compete. And don't covet. Your s and don't <laughs> condemn yourself or others. Your bold and brilliant and unique design is yours alone and cannot be taken away. Use time wisely and use wisdom to know your timing. No obstacle is greater than your destiny. You've got this. You cannot lose. Your gifts will find you. Discipline number five, no capes allowed. In 2004, Pixar released an animated movie about everyday superheroes called The Incredibles. Without question, Edna Mode is my favorite. As the designer of superhero costumes, she was adamant heroes have no capes, for they only bring disaster. And she's right. Hero, uh, capes have no purpose except to bring attention to yourself. They represent flash and look at me which isn't very noble or heroic. Heroes ought to be humble. And do you know what else? Heroes have gifts that they didn't necessarily ask for. Their gifts found them. Just like all heroes, our unique gifts will find us too and are to be used in service for others as well. No look at me capes. No fanfare. Just get the job done. Move on and don't worry about who gets the credit or how many likes or followers you have. It's not about popularity. It's about humanity. I also love how Joseph Campbell speaks of life as a heroic journey, a journey for the brave to venture from the conformable life into a life of supernatural wonder. Understanding that we are heroes releases us from constraints and launches us into our bold and brilliant destiny. You may not be able to fly like Superman or have an invisible jet or be Kung Fu Barbie, but note this well, you are a hero. First to yourself and then to others. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to grow through dirt Plant two trees with one seed. Don't waste your saliva. Let your gifts find you. And remember, no capes. I'd like to leave you with this spoken word. Dear Bold and Brilliant, Kung Fu Barbie is all grown up, having gained wisdom through the years, with a few more wrinkles, and jars filled with diamonds formed through tears. Never blonde. But highlights are good. May I be your shoulders to stand on so you can fly farther than I ever could? No, I'm not always primp, and I'm not always proper, but I've learned some lessons I'd like to share with you, my little grasshopper. I've heard whispers of your genius and how you spend your days reaching for the stars, but even the most gifted can doubt the consolations within their own heart and what an ace they really are. Give no light to doubt or fear. Your gifts will find you in your journey through the years. Remember, it takes thrust to pierce the stratosphere. Dear Bold and Brilliant, defy gravity. You already know that equation, but now it's not for metal. It's for the carbon in your bones, dear Bold and Brilliant. Defy science, plant two trees with one seed, and show how the impossible can turn into an orchard. Yes, it may feel awkward, but I guarantee it's your destiny. You're designed to be set apart. The past is not your path. It's only a reference point, not a destination point. So stop looking back. You don't live there. Resist the resistance. Overcome drag, and don't you dare settle. 
afterburner flames on titanium metal. My dear bold and brilliant, my hope for you is that you see the treasure that you carry, the treasure that is buried down deep beneath the layers of experience that's formed the way you see your life and yourself, your essence, the gold that is within us all, deposited like a bank draft straight from heaven's heart. You're the gift that this world needs. You've been called to help set the captives free. Yes, you, you are bold and you are brilliant. You are strong and you're resilient. You can make it through the fire. You have passion and desire. But never forget, it's through mud the most beautiful flower grows. Disappointment and regret. The things we wish we could forget. Dear bold and brilliant, we all have our stuff and we all have our story. But what if I told you that your pain when turned to purpose results in glory? You see your messes, your past, your embarrassments, their destiny seed and becomes the superpower that you need. Dear bold and brilliant, don't waste your saliva seeking people's approval. You're already 10 feet tall in your mission and in your call, doing what you need to do, fully equipped for the task ahead of you. Despite the muddy waters that you face, never back down. You must finish your race. But please remember, no capes allowed. Humility is what exalts you. Ego will bring you down. But don't worry, your gifts, they'll find you, your uniqueness and your sound. Dear bold and brilliant, you're a hero, and you don't need a cape or a camper to prove it. You're a champion and a work of art. Own and live your message. Don't conform. The vector is yours to chart. Seeing yourself fly, believing you can soar, reaching for the sky and kicking down some doors, knowing that whatever room you're in, you deserve to be there and here. Your presence is needed for your spirit shifts the atmosphere. You have brains and you have beauty. Be proud of who you are and let your voice be heard, never doubting the power of a spoken word. Hold your head up high and believe this to the core. You are bold and you are brilliant and darling. You are made for more. Thank you.